Fibonacci retracement trading to maximize profits. This is a continuation of a series uh, about support and resistance. I'll put the links to the previous videos in the description below. But you can watch this one first. If you haven't seen the others, there's really in no particular order. All right, so um, I'm going to pick up on where we cut off before, which basically we talked about Fibonacci retracement. So I have these on here already. And just as a quick review, we drew them from the low of the day to the high of the day, but then we had a gap up. So we actually do it all the way to the top. And then we get these retracements. So retrace means from this high, how far are we going to retrace and come back toward that low? And we get these percentages here and there they are. So are we going to come here and stop there and stop there and stop? Okay. This intended to be the, um, the level where it worked one, to actually if I take that off so I can move the chart forward you will see it actually hit there three times so that worked out fine it was however and this is part of the scandal uh, that's part of the crazy part of this title is it's 50% retracement which is not a Fibonacci level at all and I find these 50% levels to be very very common now what are we going to add to this? What's the trick? So the trick is we're going to go back to the theme of clusters, which we've talked about before. And we don't want to draw Fibonacci retracements. This time we want to draw Fibonacci extensions. Now, when you draw extensions, what you do, the technique is we're not going to use the previous days low and high. We're actually going to use an impulse move. So that's how you draw extensions. You choose an impulse move from a low to a high and you draw it off of that that is the official way of doing it so from this low to that high is a very clear impulse move now this is a three-point drawing tool so notice i click down there and now i'm clicking up here and i click and then as i drag it down see how the tool's coming down and so and then i gotta click it again and now it locks it in so the retracement tool is a two-point tool the extension tool is a three-point tool you gotta click it three times now, as we come over, so now this is the most recent day uh, at the time that I'm recording this. And as you can see, uh, wow, we've got, in fact, let me squish this up a little bit and move these lines. So we've got that one. Uh, and let's see, yeah, actually we want to do this one. So we got those going over. So that's cool. And now what we need to do is we need to move these over as well so that you can see the confluence all the way into the end of the day. And whoops, there you go. And if I could actually use a computer, God dang, it'd be absolutely astonishing. But nobody ever said I was astonishing. There we go. Uh, except my ex-girlfriend. Okay, so anyway, having said that, uh, <laughs> now what do we see? We see clusters confluence of support resistance levels drawn off of different lows and highs and not only drawn off to different lows and highs but also using a different tool and that's the key we don't want to use the same highs and lows we don't want to use the same tool and this is in reference to actually a great comment that somebody left before talking about hey how do i know which highs and lows to use different people use different highs and lows 100 percent correct and that is what we call Fibonacci fractals. There's actually a term for that that I uh, just made up. Fibonacci fractals. That's what I call them. And it is based on exactly what that individual commented, which was an excellent insight, by the way, and very true. So that's why a lot of people will do multiple Fibonacci levels and um, look for the clusters. Now, I find it better when you use multiple tools. So now we can look again. Remember what we did or what, what, what did we did? What did we do? We drew it from that high to that low, the extension. And then instead of it coming down and drawing retracements below that low, it drew extensions above that low. That's why we call them extensions. So there's your 26 or your 23.6, your 38.2. Your 50 and your 61.8. You can see these levels over here. Now, what's interesting about that, and remember, that was drawn before this is a new day right here. 
So that was all drawn before this day started. And then, as you saw, I just pulled them over so that the lines would extend into the new trading day. And, uh, you know, sure enough, look at that. It comes right down here. And then we find this channel. And we find this channel and the market goes sideways and chops during that time period. So butter my buns and call me a biscuit. That's a time you want to stay out of the market when you see these clusters happening like this and we're stuck. Really, we had a big move up. I call this a parabolic move where it's a very, very wide range in price. So from the low to the high in a short period of time. And one of the best ways to picture this is actually to draw a rectangle. When you see a parabolic move like that, short period of time, wide range in price, then usually the market will go into a sideways pattern for a while. And that actually has to do with volatility cycles. Markets go from high volatility to low volatility. Therefore, uh, my expectation is we're going to go into a low volatility period of time this day because we just had our high volatility cycle. So it's time for a low volatility. Hey, little pro tip here. Um, if you are scanning, and this is a very, very common and horrible practice that amateur traders do all the time, they'll use a scanner to find um, high volatility moves in the market, thinking that, oh, the scanner will give me some results of a market really, you know, hauling will be nice, patootie, and therefore I will catch big moves. That is 180 degrees opposite of what you should be doing. Because by the time the market makes a big move and mathematically calculates that enough to show it up on a scan, it's already done. You are now at the end of a high volatility cycle and you're heading into a low volatility cycle. And so people scan for that kind of stuff and then they wonder, hey, how come when I got in, the market didn't follow through? Well, that's exactly why, because you're doing it backwards. You need to scan for low volatility periods of time and then wait till the end of that cycle. That a cycle, by the way, is just equivalent to a period of time to catch a new high volatility period of time. And that's when you get those big, big, big moves. So if you want to get my cycle indicator, by the way, feel free to go to indicatorwebinar.com. We've got that for free. And um, I'm not going to say too much more about that, but it's about a 40, 45 minute um, pre-recorded video now. So you can watch it anytime you want. I give it away for free, teach you how to use it. Also, one other thing I want to mention today is I have a mini trading course that I'm giving away. And in the course, I not only teach you about trading, but I teach you one of my favorite trade strategies called the rubber band trade, because I know most people they follow different YouTube videos and they say, well, I don't know who I can trust. And I totally get that. So I felt the best way that I could earn your trust is just to give you a trade strategy. Say, here it is, go make money with it, no charge. And if you make money with it, then you'll probably like me a little bit, <laughs> maybe even buy some more stuff from me. Hey, how's that for uh, transparency? And if it doesn't work for you, well, you didn't lose anything other than a little bit of time, but you're already spending time trading. So um, that's how we operate here at Top Dog Trading. We like to give you uh, value in advance and, you know, let you go from there. So if we can make some money for free, you want to follow through, great. And if you don't, that's okay too. I'm here for you either way.